When I was a little girl growing up in Jerusalem, Israel, we didn't have television or watch movies. The movies, you see, were inside our head all the time. We read books. Now, we didn't own many books. They were expensive. One borrowed books from the library or swapped them with friends. Achlafot, as in, coming to swap books. Can I come swap books with you today? Hey, you want to come over and swap books? If someone is your friend, you swap books. And like all the kids in Israel in the early 60s, I was a devout groupie of Chasamba. Chasamba, it's a series of books, it's an acronym. Chavurat Sod Muchlat Bechlet. The Gang of Absolute Total Secret. <laughs> they were a secret society of six boys and two girls. Their leader, the handsome and fearless Yaron Zehavi. Second in command, Tamar Hayafa Tamar, the beautiful. She had a long braid, so did I. They were inseparable, and anyone reading those books wanted them to get married when they grew up, and in book 23, they did. <laughs> Chasamba were my heroes. They uncovered international conspiracies and caught Russian spies. They fought the Arabs and the cruel British mandate. They saved the nation of Israel from all its enemies. But that was in the books, you see. The enemies, they were in the books. They weren't for real until fourth grade. Fourth grade. And for the first time in my life, I have enemies. Boys. <laughs> Do you remember that time when boys become them? All of a sudden, they don't play with us anything anymore, except tag, two versions. Habanim al Habanot, boys on the girls, they chase us. Habanot al Habanim, girls on the boys, we chase them. They grab our skirts and pull our hair. We shriek, they holler, we tackle them. It's brutal, they're the enemy. <laughs> and then there are my personal mortal enemies. Boaz Malchi, skinnier than a pine needle. His best friend, Yuval Stendel. Freckled face, shortest boy in the class, only a hair taller than me. It started at recess. I wasn't playing Habanim al Habanot, I was just standing there. Boss comes over, pulls my braid. Hey, I'm not playing. So stop. Get to me if you can. I start chasing him, but there's Yuval right behind me, pulling my braid. Hey, stop. Get to me if you can. And I don't stand a chance. He may be the shortest, but he's the fastest runner in the school. They chase me after school singing. No, I oh, no, and I sat at the no, I no, I motorcycle riding to the movies. <laughs> Apparently the only two words in the Hebrew language that rhyme with my name. <laughs> I come home in tears. I say to my mother, nobody likes me. All the boys hate me. And my mother, who's known to have a fit if you throw, uh, if, you, if you spill milk on the counter or forget to flush the toilet, when presented with my real suffering, she's not even impressed. Of course, for her, if it's not the Nazis or the hunger or the war of independence, what could possibly be so bad in my childhood? <laughs> she's smiling. Ach, Stuyot, what nonsense. Who told you such a silly thing? They're pulling my braid all the time. <laughs> boys, boys. <laughs> they just don't know how to behave. No, Ali, I'll tell you a secret. If boys, when boys pull your braid, it's a sign they like you. <laughs> what? I mean, doesn't she get that this is war? <laughs> Obviously, help is not going to come from my mother. She's become stupider than boys. <laughs> I'm forced to take matters into my own hand. I make sure that I go home with a group of girls. If I'm with all the girls, boss, and you will don't dare come close to pull my braid. But one day, I take too long to gather my things. When I go out into the sunshine, the girls are gone, and I hear, Hey, no, no! My enemies, boss, you will. My heart starts pounding. I'm just going to ignore them and go home fast. Hey, no, no, wait up. 
but I'm already on the other side of the street, past the cypress trees. At the corner, I start running. The braid swishing from side to side, the book bag bouncing against my back. Hey, stop! But I know what they're gonna do if I stop. They're gonna pull my braid. It's just one long block to the corner of our street. From there down the slope where the second house on the left. It's not far, I just need to get there. I'm running as fast as I can, but, but the bag is so heavy, it, it's like I'm slogging through a swamp. If only this was Hasamba, I would be faster than the wind like Tamal. I would be fearless like Yaron Zehavi. But this is not a movie in my head. This is for real, and they're closing in on me. I turn down the slope of the street. Yuval is so close, his breath like a dragon's flame scorching my back. I am at the lamppost, at the opening to the path leading to our building, and snap! Something snaps inside and I stop. It's like a force I never knew existed takes over. I know I'm going to die, but I'm just not going to run anymore. And I twirl around and yell into his face, what do you want? His face is red and sweaty, his eyes bright green. Want to swap books? <laughs> what? Can I come up to swap books? With me? Yeah. Now? Yeah. What about Boaz? Yuva shrugs. You have Hasamba and the horse thieves? No. But I have Hasamba and the claws of Florent and the Cyclops. Okay. He follows me down the path. And from that moment, my mortal enemy, Yuval, and I become the first couple of the fourth grade. <laughs> Wasn't easy being the first couple of the fourth grade at the age of habanim al habanot, us versus them. But it was much harder to admit that someone as stupid as my mother could be right once again. <laughs>